So of course we all know I have two weaknesses. Anything with an ESP chip that's flashable, and of course, IP cameras. And well, I may not always follow the YouTube cardinal rules of making you wait till the end to see how things are. Well, I just skipped to it. This camera was downright impressive. So let's go check it out. I was impressed with the real link camera. Wow. But wow, this is a very impressive camera. It's got a little more weight to it. Probably maybe some faster motors. Of course, it does have a better lens on it. This one is sporting a 12X optical, so I'm very curious to get this installed and just see how it really compares to things when I did the other PTZ cameras. And no, not the one that had the accident, we'll say. So it does come in two pieces since you'll be mounting the arm first. So you'll mount this to the wall. There actually is a little like hook or chain that goes to both of them. And there's the three screws and you stick it in here and run the wires through. I definitely like this type of mounting system. That way you can easily mount this. You don't have anything getting in the way whenever you're putting the screws or bolts or whatever when you attach it to the wall. So let's get to the actual connections. So there's a little few other connections. Of course, you do have the 12 volts and they do supply you with the 12 volt power supply if needed. So it's 12 volts, 3.0 amps, and it is 100 to 240 in. So I'm sure for the other countries, you can get the different types of power supplies. And of course, since it is one of our big favorite things, this is PoE. But take note, just like the other PTZ camera, the real link one, we had to use PoE Plus because it uses more wattage to control the motors and everything. So make sure and get you a PoE Plus also referred to as 802.3AT. This one does has a few more wires that you can utilize. They got the earth ground and there is an alarm in and an alarm out. So I'm about to look more into that. I don't know if you maybe could do some external motion sensors possibly, or you could feed something out hardware wise, as well as they do have the audio out and the audio in wires that you could attach to various microphones or speakers or whatnot. Now, one thing I did look at, I was curious where the micro SD card was at. And to get to the micro SD card slot, you do have to remove this back panel. And that's also where the reset button is at in case you forget your password. So it does have 360 degree swivel, which is a huge plus. You won't have to go back and forth. And of course, this lens will go all the way down to give you a full range of view below the camera. Or of course, you can go up with it. So pretty cool stuff. Let's go get this one installed and check it out. So for the install, we did have the Reolink PTZ camera up here, but we have since moved that over to an under the eave mount. It was a slightly larger bolt pattern, but I was able to utilize the same Ethernet hole. didn't have to cut any additional in the side of the house. Simply just put in our four lag screws that we had and mounted it straight up and it went up no problem. Pretty simple install. They do not have a mount yet that allows it to mount, say, under an eave but they are working on it, they tell me, but I have not seen any pictures of what it's gonna look like. So hopefully we can get that soon because I wouldn't wanna mount this in the corner of my house so I can get more range of field of view. So maybe asking, well, where can I record all of my video to? Well, of course you can record to the, an internal micro SD card. Now I would never rely just on the micro SD card of your sole destination of video. They always seem to fail exactly the timing you need them. But it's not a bad idea to have two locations. You could have the micro SD and say an MVR. Well, you can also record to the Amcrest Cloud. You can record to an Amcrest MVR. And yes, it does work with Blue Iris and various other software MVR since it does support OnVIF and RTSP. It's a very flexible camera and let's take a look at the actual specs. Now, there are a couple different versions of this camera. The one I have in this test is the 1080p. PoE, power over Ethernet. There is a Wi-Fi version as well as there is a four megapixel version versus the two megapixel. 
We won't roll through all the specs here, but of course, during my rambling, you can probably take a look at the slide behind me. As we did mention, the PoE will need PoE+, Plus, which is 802.3AT, the AF regular PoE version of the Power Over Ethernet, and it will not work. We will leave a link down below for various PoE switches that do support PoE+. Plus. Now we chose to use PoE Plus because it's simply just one wire to it for the power and data. It makes it super simple and keeps the wires out of the way, which is what you really want to do when you're installing a camera. And the one big key that we were very impressed with was the speed and the 12x zoom. Let's jump into the interface and take a look. Now one thing I did want to point out is take a look here at this frame and you'll notice that ugly blue E. Yeah. Currently, as of the recording of this video, you do have to use a plugin with the current firmware to access the video stream from the Amcrest camera. Now, Amcrest, they have been making good on their word. If you did see one of my previous videos on still one of my favorite stationary cameras by Amcrest is that 4K turret. We did state that we did have to use the plugin, but as of now, they do have a firmware upgrade for that camera that gets rid of any plug-in and it loads up straight into Chrome and has no issues at all and looks great. Now I did ask Amcrest if this camera would also get its firmware upgraded. They told me to keep an eye on the Amcrest firmware upgrade page and we'll definitely look for that and get this camera upgraded as soon as possible. So hopefully in the future we won't need the ugly blue E anymore or even flash. That's looking at you, Real Link. So once you jump into the interface and if you've ever used Amcrest before, it's good, you'll be right at home with this exact camera, except it adds the PTZ controls. I'll go ahead and slide myself down here so we're not covering up too much of the GUI. Otherwise, we'd have to shrink it and it'd be hard if you're watching on mobile, etc. So I've actually not sped up any of the movements of the camera itself. And that way, you, I wanted to show you exactly how fast it was when it would move back and forth. Now, we are using speed number eight right now. now. Of course, if you did want to slow it down, you could just change the speed and do some smaller steps and slowly step it back and forth. Pretty simple stuff on the PTZ controls. It does move pretty fast as well as the focus is pretty quick too, as you can see. We have mentioned just a couple times that the zoom is just downright amazing on this camera. Well, as you can see in this little wide angle shot we have here, you can see the trash cans out waiting to be emptied for the next morning. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we can see. If we just simply hold down the plus, we can zoom all the way in and it focuses right up for us pretty quickly. And now you can actually read the number on that trash can without any issue. And it automatically focused for us and we can zoom back out and we can move around and it's pretty cool stuff. And you don't have to wait on anything with this camera. It is really waiting on you. So there are several different functions you can turn on with PTZ. You can go to the presets and we'll show you how to preset those. And you can see it jumps straight to the preset. I could sit here and play with the PTZ on this camera all day. It's super quick and impressive. So for the setup, one thing where Amcrest really shines and you can definitely see where you get your money's worth paying a little more for Amcrest is you can really get down to the nitty gritty and change all kinds of settings. And then you can even do profiles for night and day. It's just downright crazy on what you can do on this camera. And we're not gonna go through all of them, but just to go through them, I can't explain every single one of them, but they do have documentation on most of these different options that you can go through and change all the different things on this camera. Of course, as we mentioned before, the camera is H2.64. Does it have H265? It is just 1080p, but the frame rate will go up to 30 frames a second if you like. And one thing for the Blue Iris users, I know you want to set the frame interval so that way you can turn on the limit decoding. That does work. So for the overlays, the overlay is pretty cool on this. You can actually, for the titles, you actually get the ability to drag them around instead of just several different options of just a little drop down like you see on some other cameras so you can get it to look exactly like you want. 
Now, of course, you do get your network settings, which we did mention before. You do get your RTSP, as well as you even get HTTPS if you like as well. And of course, you do get on VIF. Now down to PTZ, this is where you're gonna get into the functions where you can set all of your presets and you just simply move the camera around and then you can save it and then add the preset you want. Like this is just one tour I was playing with. You can say preset one, two, six, then five, the duration, the speed, and the camera will basically move and jump around and just continue to loop. And you can catch a large area that way if you like. You also do scans, there's patterns, you can pan. There's all kinds of things you can change in the PTZ setting of the camera itself. Now, once you get past that and you get to the events, you're going to get to some of your typical stuff that you do see in these typical Amcrest cameras, which is the video detection, the alarms. Um, you can go down and set the motion detection. You can set the motion detection area. You can set various different regions and the sensitivity. You can set the destination whether you want to do FTP or say a NAS directly to a hard drive. Now we just put in a SD card for the testing of this and we will show the internal playback DVR feature in the camera. And this is the one I'm looking for. So hopefully we'll be able to update the description down below saying that Amcrest made good on their word and upgraded this firmware and now we no longer have to use any plugins and it works straight in Chrome or in various other browsers. So for the playback, we've covered it before, pretty simple stuff. We've got a few days of recordings in here. You can jump to the day you want and you could get the events down here at the bottom, much like you would with various other DVRs. And pick the event that you want, and you can go ahead and hit, hit the play button, or you can just simply fast forward through things and let them play through. Of course, you do get the file list. If you want to actually download an exact file to download and go with a time, you could just find the time you want and hit the little download button. It actually would download that video file down to your computer. That way you could send it off or whatever you need to do with that video segment. So for all of you Home Assistant fans out there, don't forget Amcrest has a cool little integration straight into Home Assistant itself. If you scroll all the way down, there is a sample configuration of how to configure the binary sensors, how to configure the SD card sensor, etc. And of course, we have a sample little configuration we have in Home Assistant. So you get your motion detected. You can use this to drive all kinds of automations or whatever you want to do based on motion of the camera, and it's all local. If the camera goes offline, you'd have a binary sensor for that to drive any notifications to you. And last but not least, you do have the call service. There's several different call services in the Amcrest, and one we are showing is the PTZ one. So of course, I know all of you Lovelace gurus are gonna build a better interface than this. This is just a sample little GUI interface that I whipped up for this video to show that you can just simply hit the button and it will jump straight to it. And this, the card is a streaming card as well for live video. So I'm sure you're probably already churning through various different automations of, hey, we maybe we saw a gate that opened using a like Y sensor will automatically move the camera over there and start recording. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with Home Assistant and this camera integration. So for the Blue Iris users out there, it is very simple to bring this camera in. You'll just go ahead and use the wizard to bring it in. You'll simply hit configure. Put the IP address of the camera in, put your username and password, leave everything as default, hit the find inspect button, and it will pull the camera down as well as it will pull in the preset names as you can see here. If you do change the preset names after you do this, just simply go back and hit the find inspect button. It will refresh those preset names for you. It'll fill everything out for you. Just hit okay, you can leave it as default. And if you did want to go in and change your various triggers and audio, et cetera, if you know your Blue Iris stuff, by all means, go ahead. Of course, you can see in the GUI itself, you do get all the PTZ controls automatically in Blue Iris itself. So you can do all of your automation straight in Blue Iris. 
very impressive PTZ camera. And I will say now even having this PTZ camera, the zoom and the speed issues are no longer an issue when I want to look at something real quick on the side of the house. I will be looking out for their mounting bracket that will allow me to mount it under the eave as I would like to move it where currently I have my real link camera. So I appreciate MCrest for sending this camera out for review. Of course, we always speak our mind and this one definitely knocked it out of the park and no, we did not have to smash it like we had to do with another one that may have had some issues. I want to say thanks to all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely helps bring content and various projects to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, smash that button, hit that bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one. Y'all take care.